Yeah, we have Gallo ahead in his NSX. He won't expect to see is approaching in our high ace van. On the power, absolutely smoking his doors. Unbelievable stuff in this 1200 horsepower engine swap van. Probably the worst silhouette we've ever received in Gran Turismo 07 was confirmed to be the worst car. But whether it was intentional or not, Gran Turismo has created an iconic car and we can absolutely dominate Tokyo Expressway World Touring Car 600 with this beast. The Toyota Hiace has a, a ton of customization options and it has an absolute monster engine swap which allows you to generate 1200 horsepower in this ridiculous panel van. And if you just straight up want the tuning sheet, here it is on the screen right now and here's the second page. Uh, but because there are so many customization options in this one, I'm going to build a brand new uh, Toyota Hiace van for you and you can play along with me, set it up exactly the same and then we're going to dominate World Touring Car 600. So first of all, you want to go and get the van and that is available from Brand Central. Head over to Asia and then choose Toyota. And then we've got a bunch of random Toyotas to choose from. And the most random of all is the brand new uh, Hiace Van DX 2016 model. It's 25,000 credits, which is a bit of a steal. We've got five uh, generic colors available to us, but it doesn't really matter what color we choose. I'm going to choose a blue one just because and then just purchase. With your van selected, the first thing you want to go and do is head down to GT Auto. Choose car maintenance and service. And we want to do two things to this van. We want to add the wide body kit and do the engine swap. For the engine swap, you do need to be collector level 50. If you're not there yet, uh, check out links in the description below because that I've got guides to help you to earn money in Grand Tourism 7 in a bunch of different ways that I hope you to spend money to earn your collector level. Uh, but for now, we're going to head down to Wide Body Kit and we're going to stretch those arches. Unbelievable. <laughs> Work complete. And then we also want to do the engine swap. And uh, at the moment, at the time of recording this video, there is only one engine swap available. So it is the LS7 BRZ edition. And we want to install that engine now. 300,000 credits. Throw it in, guy. There we go. Work complete. At this point, this is where we would choose our livery that we want to put on the car. And this is the right point to do so because we're going to make some cosmetic changes after we've done this. So head over to uh, showcase, head down to content search, head across to the tick box for current car and then head down to content search. What that does, that searches for any livery that is available for the car you've currently chosen. Uh, and you can choose any livery you want to apply to it, but specifically we want to choose one that is the wide car version. So uh, feel free to head down, browse through here, choose a wide car version, because that is the way we want the car to run. When you're happy with the livery you want to choose, uh, head over and choose uh, to add to your collection. The button is just, just here. To apply the livery you've chosen, head over to GT Auto, head over to Car Customization, and head all the way across to load style. I want to head down to where it says collection just above my head, right here. This shows all of the liveries that you've uh, added to your collection and we are gonna go for the 18 van. Cue the music. And once you're happy with that, you can just choose apply style. If there's anything you need to buy, then it will just buy it for you and then you're good to go. Specifically, I suggest to do the following with your wheels. So choose wheels, which is just behind me right here. Um, it doesn't matter what wheels you choose. I'm gonna choose these um, Volks Racing TE37 Vs. Uh, and the important thing to choose is to choose the wide version of the wheel. Uh, choose the rim width to be uh, standard size. Uh, you can see here, if you choose the wide, it, it stretches the tires. Uh, so choose the standard size wheel width. 
and then for the uh, we, uh, rim diameter choose 18 inch this is the way I prefer to drive the car this does actually have a significant effect on the way the car drives I will cover that in a future video guys so make sure you subscribe for that one uh, but for now just copy what I'm doing and we'll be good to go choose install and get them installed next choose uh, custom parts and for the front uh, we want either of type A or type B it doesn't matter which one but it needs to be one of the type versions not the standard part for the side it doesn't particularly matter choose which one you prefer the best for the rear choose type B I think that's one that probably generates the most rear downforce and then specifically for the wing type A or type B doesn't matter uh, but it needs to be one of the types it doesn't need to be the standard version and that's going to get your car set up with regard to the cosmetics and downforce parts that you need. Now back to the main menu, we want to go to the tuning shop now. We're going to buy some parts to add to the car. I'm going to do this in kind of reverse order. I work from ultimate and go backwards because that is where you can apply uh, the best stuff straight away. Uh, so we're going to go with the ultra high RPM turbocharger. We're going to install that. And for some reason to gain uh, 200 horsepower, we lose PP. Something's a little bit broken with this PP calculations, guys. I'm going to make absolute maximum of that. We're also going to have the carbon propeller shaft from the extreme tab. We don't need anything from the extreme tab at all. We're going to skip over to racing. And from the racing tab, we're going to choose any of these two brakes. It doesn't really matter which one. They both perform exactly the same. We're going to want to have the brake balance controller, the fully customizable suspension, the racing clutch and flywheel set, and then we're also going got to use the fully customizable racing transmission. Heading over to the semi racing tab now, you could buy a high RPM turbocharger just to keep it a part of the set, but we don't need to use it. We do want to have the fully customizable LSD. Heading to the club sports tab, and we're going to want to put a uh, power restrictor in there, uh, a bit of ballast just in case we need to use it. We don't actually need to use it, but it's always useful to have it for all of your cars. In the sports tab now, we're going to want to use the um, sports medium tires. That is my preference for the tire uh, for this event. And then we want to go back through and apply the weight reductions. So we're going to start with weight reduction stage one. You have to pl apply these sequentially. You cannot just skip to the end. Uh, so we're going to go through to weight reduction stage two. On to semi racing now, looking for weight reduction stage three. And what more can we do? Weight reduction stage four is not available. Uh, neither is stage five. So we've got the maximum weight reduction we can have. One thing I did forget to get in the racing tab, we, we do want to have the racing brake pads. You can give it a little bit more braking performance. So now we've got all the parts we need to build and tune the perfect uh, highest van. Head to garage. Now head over to car settings. And we're going to go and change all of these numbers to be what we want them to be. On screen is all the numbers that they need to be. I'm going to run through the settings now. If you do want to know more details about what everything does in the tuning sheet in Grand Tour 7, then check out the link in the description below for downtonator.com. I've got an article on my website which tells you everything you need to know about what each setting does. And because we've got plenty of headroom for performance in this car, we're nowhere near the 600 pp limit. You can change these numbers, you can change the way the car drives to tune it a little bit better to how you would like it to be but to run through the settings it's the sports medium tires we need on the car it's the fully customizable suspension that we need on the car the front body height actually does need to be a lot lower than that there's an old setting from before so i think i ran it at 104 was uh, the best it runs at uh, all of the front suspension settings are at the maximum because the car is very unstable on the brakes and it's a little bit oversteery so we want to make the car as neutral and numb as possible on uh, turn in so we, we're pretty much uh, at the maximum at the mall negative camber I'll just put it at two degrees all around it's a bit of a black art at the moment and tow angle is set to zero uh, for the rear 136 is the rear ride height and I've um, stiffened up a little bit of the rear end uh, but also softened the rear anti-roll box I want to add more rear grip to the car so here are the numbers for that for the differential it's the fully customizable LSD and specifically the braking sensitivity is all the way to the maximum because that helps to keep the car stable on the brakes it reduces the uh, differential action when you're on the brakes and when you're coasting heading up to downforce I've got it set to 90 at the front this is pretty tunable and depending if you want the car to understeer or oversteer this is a setting that we're very useful to change uh, but rear is set to maximum because we want to have the maximum rear traction uh, for this van because it's got it's got 1232 horsepower so we need rear traction in this one I've got the fully customizable ECU but the output is set to 100 uh, there is no ballast on the car and the power restrictor is set to 100 
pro tip guys if you find the car has too much power which that is completely acceptable uh, then just lower this number down you can just start to really tame the car to be a lot more drivable even down to 76 still gives you 900 horsepower that will also help you a little bit with fuel efficiency if you are finding you're not quite getting those six laps of fuel I've got the fully customizable racing transmission. I've set the final transmission speed to 280. Uh, that's not exactly what it is because of the engine swap. Uh, I don't have any manually adjusted gears. Uh, here are the numbers if you want to copy them. Uh, there are people that made comments in other videos I've made that changing the gear ratios manually can get you up to one to two seconds a lap. Now, I personally haven't found that, uh, but feel free to tune that if you want to. Nitrous overtake is not allowed and it's not installed. And we do have the high Oh, sorry, we do have the ultra high RPM turbocharger. Uh, we've got the drilled uh, racing discs, racing pads, normal handbrake, brake balance controller. Brake balance is set all the way forwards. Uh, that is for two things. It's to make it stable on the brakes and it's also to reduce the tire wear, the rear tire wear specifically, because we've got so much power in this car, it absolutely destroys rear tires. I don't bother with the steering angle kit. I've got the racing uh, clutch and flywheel and the carbon prop shaft, uh, and we've got weight reduction stage one, two, and three installed. So that is the tune, guys. Let's go and see how to use it. So the race we're going to use it on is obviously the Sarden. Uh, so the race we're going to use it on is the Tokyo Expressway. We're going to head over to World Circuits, head over to Asia, heading over to Tokyo Expressway and heading across to the World Touring Car 600 Tokyo Expressway. Guys, if you do want a Tokyo Expressway t-shirt, hoodie, or any other merch, then make sure you check out the links in the description. Head over to daltonator.com. I've got some fantastic Tokyo Expressway merch over there. Another pro tip for this one, guys, you can use automatic transmission. I have run a whole stint with the automatic transmission and it runs okay for fuel usage. Uh, and you can also use traction control. If you are feeling not quite as brave as I'm going to be. Use Traction Control 4. It makes the car so much more easy to drive, uh, but we're gonna go Traction Control 0 and let's see what happens. So the first thing to do, as soon as it starts, head over to the MFD for fuel map and change it to six. Fuel map six for the whole race is what you want. And guys, just watch this rocket go. That, the gap will always open up on the left-hand side and we, <laughs> We are using 1200 horsepower in the high ace van and already Susuilo is going to be passed. The Porsche has been passed. We're going to be almost into first place by the end of turn one. And this car is ridiculous, guys. Look at how fast we are going. Breaking at the apex of the line. All the way down to second gear for turn one. You can short shift to third on exit if you really want to. Now the car is absolutely wild to drive, but that's part of the nature of the fun of this car. It just spins up the wheels. You can spin up the wheels in fourth gear. It's absolutely mad. Uh, now fifth gear through here, just flow the car through. And yeah, we have Gallo ahead in his NSX. He won't expect to see us approaching in our high ace van. Second gear, sorry, uh, fourth gear through this uh, switchback here. Looking for a move on corner exit, I think. We're going to get him on the power, absolutely smoking his doors. Unbelievable stuff in this 1200 horsepower engine swap van. And it's as simple as that, guys. This car is so fast. We just drive the race. We finish the race and we get an absolute stonking race time. 100 board on the brakes. Third gear through these two corners here. Again, just squeezing the throttle gently on corner exits because we've got so much power under our foot it is ridiculous quick glance back oh, can't see anything because we're in the 18 van of course completely forgot about that one uh, braking at the 200 finding the dry pilot track it can be a little bit squirrely on the brakes this is the where the car is the most awkward because of that uh, heavily locked rear diff but we just tiptoe around that final corner and then light it up for the drive down the main straight and off we go ripping away so 5.3 laps of fuel remaining. Uh, the strategy for this one is pit at the end of lap number six, brand new tires, fill up the tank, and then just finish the race to lap 12. Opening with a one minute 13, opening in first place at the end of lap number one. And we're just an absolute rocket ship, guys. Now I'm not saying this is the easiest car to do Tokyo Expressway World Touring Car 600, but I am saying it's incredibly fast and 
if you're getting a little bit bored of driving cars in Gran Turismo 7, then this will keep you on your toes. We're going to open up lap number two with a 2 minutes 4.0. Now, that's rapid, guys. Blending on the throttle on all of... Boy. Whoa, the rear end stepped out of me there. That's why TC on number four can really help you. So check in on the fuel, we are good to go. But if you are struggling on fuel and tire wear, then you can use this race as a uh, two-stop strategy, pitting end of lap number four, end of lap number eight. That will get you the full 12 laps. And you've got so much pace over everybody in this race. You can do that, it'd be a little bit easier for you, but it won't be the ultimately fastest race time. So I made a video recently uh, discussing iRacing and driving iRacing is incredibly engaging and a lot of the comments in that video are basically slagging off Grand Turismo 7 saying it's, it's an arcade racing game. Now, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a fun game but there are sim racing mechanics and everything I'm using to rag this uh, high ace engine swap around this uh, Tokyo Expressway track comes from sim racing. The exact same techniques I used in iRacing to drive that SR8 Radical uh, to second place in the time trial. Uh, I'm employing the exact same tactics here, just, just trail breaking to the corners, just catching the slides, blending on the throttle on corner exits. All of these sim racing techniques are the exact same that I'm, I used in, in iRacing. So I, I don't know what people are saying slagging off GT7 for being an arcade racing game. The amount of engagement needed with a steering wheel without all the assists on in Gran Turismo 7 is exactly the same as you would use in iRacing. Okay, so coming to the end of lap number six, this is our pit lap, this is our one and only pit stop, so we're going to throw it into the pits, absolutely flat out at 280, 300 kilometers an hour into the pits. Uh, sports medium tyres is what we're going to use and I'm going to put a full tank of fuel in the car to get me to the end of the race. Guys, if you want anything from GT Omega to help yourself improve your sim racing experience, then check out the links in the description below. I've got an exclusive discount code CD5, gets you 5% off anything at GT Omega. Go and check it out and give yourself a treat. Okay, so at the start of lap number eight, I'm going to give you a run through of the important braking reference points to look. The sun is rising over Tokyo Expressway. Into turn one, I brake at the peak of the white line. You'll see it as we approach. I'll explain it now. You see just the jutting out white line, and I brake literally as that starts to go back in. Braking in a straight line, and then all the way down to second gear, and braking around the corner a little bit. On the corner exit, just squeezing the throttle. Third gear on corner exit. Third gear around the second corner here, and just rolling onto the throttle. Just revving out the engine a little bit spinning up those tyres up to fifth gear for this uh, sweeping sequence of corners just a bit of coast uh, through here keeping light on the wheel just to make sure we observing what the car is doing keeping to the right hand side braking just after the 100 down to fourth gear through this uh, switchback sequence here rolling onto the throttle as we exit the car gets a bit light there revs up a little bit into fifth gear just before the bridge brake and only a little bit brakes down to fourth gear float through these two corners here staying in fourth gear braking at the Japanese text on the floor flowing through here fourth gear and then 100 board at the brakes uh, down to second for these two corners here the car gets very playful and light still in third gear through these series of corners on the gas on corner exit now the reference point into the final corner is 200 meter board we're looking for that we want to stay on the right hand side where the track is the driest car can be a bit lively on the brakes very lively on turning out actually works out pretty good for us to get the car rotated and get the car on the corner exit squeezing the throttle very gently and just revving up spinning up the wheels in third gear up to fourth gear fifth gear and we are going to send it across the line here now guys So even that lap was a 2.03, 2.03.8 is my best in this race, I think I've been down to 2.03.5 in previous tests and we're coming up to back markers in this race already guys, so be cautious what the hell is this guy doing, I'm going to send it to the inside and get on the brakes into turn one. Now oh, this engine sounds fantastic, I see him just in the mirrors there, I can't look back because the old van, well I can't see. <laughs> That's probably not a good idea to have a uh, fully enclosed van uh, windows on this one, guys, but it, it is what it is. 
Hi, the 18 boys in the back there, that's what we're doing. So it comes to the end of this race, lap number 12 and the final lap of this race. Just going to run to the line, half a lap of fuel remaining, but we're good to go. Now, one word of caution, guys, is that the rear tyres can get a bit of a battering with this amount of horsepower. I'd be very cautious on the final lap before pitting. And across the line, we're going to finish the race. We're going to get the win, of course, but how fast did we do it in? There we go, 25 minutes, 41 seconds for Tokyo Expressway, World Touring Car 600, fastest lap, 2 minutes, 3.8. And there we have it, 825,000 credits in that very short space of time with the Toyota Hiace. So there we go, guys, an unsuspecting hero from update 1.52, and it is the Toyota Hiace van with the engine swap, with my tune that gets you to dominate uh, Tokyo Expressway World Touring Car 600. Now, guys, there is scope to change that tune a little bit if you want to, to get more steering, less steering, change the way it drives very subtly. And to do that, you're going to want to know everything about tuning in Grand Tourism 7. Check out the video on screen right now or the link to my website to get you over there where I've got a full guide how to tune stuff in Grand Tourism 7. Go and check it out and we'll catch you in the next one.